So before I start this video, I really want to apologize about the vest. It's way too hot here in the UK and I would usually put a t-shirt on, but I just can't deal with it recently. All right guys, I've been meaning to make a video on custom ROMs on certain phones for a while. And whilst the Note 4 is now gone, I was actually using it for a while with 8.0.1, which my friend Griffin helped me install. Shout out, there's his Twitter. And I mean, he's on the Discord quite a lot. He's got his own little role and everything. Absolute beast, really does help me so much with the software. And it wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be, but we'll get back into that. I'm going to be telling you about the Note 4, the Galaxy Note 4, running on 8.0.1, or a custom version of the operating system. Hey guys, my name is Ryan Thompson with Failtech, and this is the video that some of you at least have been waiting for. Let's start off with something unexpected to me, which was how easy it was to install. Samsung always scared me with installing custom ROMs, because you had to use Odin, and it wasn't just straight ADB and fast boot. And that's what I was used to with Nexuses, which had unlocked bootloaders out of the factory and stuff like that. So this was something that really I thought was going to be extremely challenging. I won't take all the credit though. Griffin was very patient with me and a lot of the steps that I completely missed, he managed to get back and got me sorted. There were a couple of times that I actually did kind of jump the gun a bit and he helped me out. He's an absolute am amazing guy. So really, please do check out his Twitter. But by using Odin, the XDA forums, and chatting to my good old boy Griffin, we got there in the end. We installed TWRP, Magisk, which is like a root access thing and it enables you to put add-ons on there or modules, and OpenG apps, which is important on getting the Google services, such as the Play Store and other things like that. You can get them in different variants depending on how much Google you want your phone to be. I tend to pick the one that's just got the basics in it so that I can customize it to my own liking. Again, this was way easier than expected. All I needed was a Windows-based PC, which I have lying around the house anyway, and the phone, and then a cable and uh, maybe a good friend called Griffin. Let's talk about features now. I told you about how I installed it and what the process was to go through that. Now I'm gonna tell you about what I actually used the phone for and its standout features compared to the stock version. Firstly, just to clarify, this is Lineage OS, which is kind of a version based off Cyanogen from years and years ago. And this is 8.1.0 rather. So it's actually a lot newer than 8.0.1. Now this kind of looks stock. It's got a few customization tweaks, which enable you to go deeper into the phone. You can change the DPI, allowing for more assets on that display because this display is 5.7 inches and it's QHD so it's got plenty of pixels and nice bigger pixels so you can actually fit more on the display which is really nice because the stock version didn't really have that kind of functionality on 6.0.1. I believe you can change the resolution as well and the whole operating system was just so much smoother. The animations were quicker, of course you can enable those and change those differently in the settings. There was more customization than pretty much any phone that's had this before and because it's 8.1.0 you get all the features like Google Assistant and all this stuff baked into the OS, which is awesome. It's kind of like using a Pixel, but kind of on steroids, but then in the hardware that you want. So any hardware that you want, for example, the Note 4 for me, or it could be something bezel-less for you. It could be a ch cheap Chinese phone like Xiaomi or Oppo. It could be any of these. And the fact that you're able to install Lineage on them, it, it kind of enables the software of a higher-end phone in maybe the hardware of a lower-end phone. What this newer software enables is in the future more support in terms of software because these things get stupidly fast updates, which is really, really cool. And although they're not updated as fast as some of the more popular devices, they're still a lot faster than let's say Samsung or LG's OEM. You get more security fixes, it's a more secure operating system, it's a lot smoother with the newer features and compatibility going into the future with modern applications is going to be better. So there are pretty much no drawbacks, except there's one massive drawback with the Note 4. This phone as Griffin and I found out looking through forums and stuff is for some reason extremely buggy when it comes to installing custom ROMs. Doesn't have to be Lineage, could be Resurrection, Viper OS, any of these. It just seems to be very buggy and I say that because I was really looking forward to a, a nice operating system and don't get, don't get me wrong it was very smooth. The operating system itself was very smooth but there were some limitations, some weird obstacles in the way that kind of made me think why don't I just go back to stock. Now obviously the bloat and everything was gone and that's great but there are two main problems with specifically this lineage one but it can also apply to a lot of others as well. Firstly is the back camera can only shoot up to 1080p video for some reason. We're not really sure why but it's just kind of a limitation within the camera app. It's something that's annoying because of course the Note 4 can shoot up to UHD video and slow motion video but 1080p was the max resolution. Maybe it's something to do with the fact that stabilization is only enabled at 1080p on this specific model, but yeah, it's kind of annoying there. And secondly, and this is the main reason that I couldn't install it, 
is for some reason the Note 4 has a very, let's say, proprietary fingerprint scanner and pretty much no operating system or custom operating system will support it. Now, this is really odd because when you go to set up your phone as new, because you'll have to, you actually set it, you swipe your thumb or your finger on the fingerprint scanner and it, it works kind of. Then you go into the settings and you can set a fingerprint. It, it works, it picks up your fingerprint and even gives you errors when it doesn't swipe. You know, it kind of works as normal, but unlocking with the fingerprint, that's a completely different story. Griffin and I tried three different ROMs. One was on 6.0, one was on 7.0, and this one's on 8.0, kind of classing. And none of them really worked for the fingerprint scanner. Like we had to revert to stock and it wasn't my scanner's problem because as soon as we went back to stock after and when I sold the device, worked like a peach, absolutely no problem. So this is something that's very limited apparently to the Note 4, but it is something to watch out for. So that begs the question, is it worth it? Now, of course, like I said before, it all depends on what you want out of your phone. If you really like those S Pen features, unfortunately, you're not going to be getting those in something like a custom ROM because it's not tailored specifically for that device. Yes, it might be supported in the device, but the actual features are not going to be tailored to that specific device unless you go with a really custom ROM, which I'm pretty sure no one's come out with for the Note 4. So actually, you do lose out on a lot. A lot of the bloat, for Samsung, especially with the Note series, is often at times good bloat and useful bloat, like the S Pen features, hovering over the screen with the S Notes and the changing of the different screenshot settings and all that stuff. Yes, you can download third party apps and you can create your own notes and stuff and that's great. However, the convenience of having those built in is just something that I wouldn't live without if I had a note. And it's something that I'd have to stay on stock software to do. Fingerprint scanner not working, the limitation to 1080p video, and the overall kind of bugginess of behind the scenes and the back end of the phone did seem to worry me enough that I wouldn't install it and I definitely wanted to revert back to it even if I wasn't going to sell the phone in the future. A lot of people don't care about these things and a lot of people, and I know a lot of you, are going to probably be clever enough to go and sort this yourself and code it in yourself. My friend Griffin is an absolute monster when it comes to coding and stuff and he could probably make it himself. I don't think it's worth it. I really, really like stock Android. And those of you who have been around my channel since like the early 500 subscribers will know that I started off my Android career with Nexus. I love Nexi, Nexus, however you pronounce that. And it was an absolute bummer when it didn't work on the Note 4, which had a gorgeous display, an absolutely stunning display, a good camera, and a bunch of features that I really like in a phone, a removable battery, an S Pen, micro SD card expansion, all this stuff, a build that I found really nice for some reason. All this stuff, limited by its software, but then you go to replace the software and it doesn't work. Maybe it's just my version, which is this version right here. I'll leave it on the screen so you can get the exact model and maybe you might be able to help me with fixing it. Unfortunately, I don't have the phone anymore. I've had to sell it on and there will be updates and stuff uh, in regards to that. Anyway, again, I'm really sorry for the vest. It, it's really annoying that I have to wear this in videos because it's just a pain in the butt. I want to thank all of you so much for watching and I really want to give a special thanks to Griffin for helping me out and a special thanks to my patrons for your continued support. It has been amazing. I do recommend that you go and check his Twitter out in the description, also try and put it on the screen somewhere, and join our Discord because that is where it's easiest to get in contact with us and it works well, nine times out of 10. Hopefully I can get more of these videos out to you guys and hopefully I won't be melting in the next video. My name's been Ryan Thomas from Failtech, thank you so much for watching. Please do like, dislike, comment, and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. Also, please do follow me on, on social media because it helps even though it's not as good as Discord. I do recommend the Discord. Again, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.